Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. So in today's episode we're going to be painting the seats or one of the seats in the TT, the Mark 1 TT. Good news, it's past its MOT. So we were able to replace both of the swinger arms and now it's passed which is great. But now of course we've got to um, get the uh, seat sorted. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is take the seat out. Fortunately, with this car, the fact that we, it's a roadster means that this is going to be much easier than normal. So we'll get the roof down, then we'll start taking the seats out. It literally is just four bolts, two in the back, two at the front, and then we unclip the airbag and then out she comes. Right, so we've got the chair up on our table. Hopefully you can hear me nice and clearly because I've got my heater on because you need to get the room into a certain temperature for the uh, paint to adhere correctly. So getting this seat out, this seat is not too bad. You can see some cracking. That's standard for leather. Now hopefully when we do the painting and the sanding down, that a lot of this should go away. Um, but actually the seat is not in too bad a condition. You can see along here, uh, classic bolster wear on the, um, on the bolster here where it's gone. Um, top of it is fine. This, because people don't normally lean on the seat uh, headrest, the headrest is actually in really good condition. Uh, but the seat in general is in pretty, pretty okay condition, but we can make it better with this kit. Again, this bolster here, you can just see where the leather's hardening and in fact, you can see where some of the paint, the original paint has come away. Because yes, I know it sounds hard to believe, but cows don't, skin or leather doesn't come out this color. Damn! It is painted. All leather is painted. So what we'll do, we will uh, rub this down, we'll take off the uh, up the top coat. Now the top coat is a lacquer, would you believe? Yes, there is a lacquer on the leather and that's what protects it and that's what stops the color from coming through onto you. So we're gonna take that off with some of the product that we use and that should, uh, you'll see the difference how the seat looks when that happens. Now let me show you the product that we're using. Right, so first of all, this kit that I bought, it's a, the medium sized kit. So it's about 75 pound and it's good to cover two seats. First of all, you get two, two um, propellants. That All these are a can of air. You also get a paintbrush kit as well. This basically plugs into that and then that feeds the airbrush and then you can uh, paint the seats. You get a cup, um, you get some alcohol cleaner. So we use the alcohol cleaner first of all to uh, take away and clean the um, seats. We use the leather prep, actually we use the leather prep first. So we use that in this cotton, this scouring pad and some cotton buds. So you basically soak the cotton buds in leather prep. You put them in here, then you rub the seat. And then once the paint, once the clear coat comes away, you start to see the color come through on the pad, you know that you've taken the clear coat away. Um, the leather prep also takes away any silicon. The alcohol prep, you then use that after you've taken all the uh, lacquer away, and then that takes away any residue that will, um, come away with alcohol. So once we've done that on the seat, we then use the color. So here is our color, black. Uh, and then we basically use these sponges here to just dab it all over in the places where the uh, airbrush may find it difficult to get in. So in between the grooves, we do all those first, etc. Then, once we've done a couple of coats of the paint, we then go to our finisher. So that we, you get two finishes in the kit, you get a, a matte and a gloss. Now, the average manufacturer, what they do, is more of a matte finish. So in here, what you would do is, is you would use 75% matte, 25% gloss to give you the kind of finish that you would get with a manufacturer. Along with that, you also have these things here called cross-linker ecos. Now, this is new, these little things here. 
Now you mix that with the finisher and that gives the uh, finished coat, uh, uh, basically it makes it harder, it makes sure that it doesn't come off on you. So you mix that up at a ratio of one to eight. So for every 15, if for every 125 mil of that, you want 15 mil of uh, the cross linker. And that's the kit. You also get some gloves and some cloths and some sponges, what you use to dab the paint in. So that's the kit in a nutshell, very easy to use. And now I'm gonna show you that in detail. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna strip off the paint and we'll do that using the leather prep. Okay, so. Let's put the um, prep on there, the leather prep on the scouring pad, and we now will scour the um, leather. So what this is doing, as I said, is it's taking off the lacquer coat, the top coat. And you can see some of the paint already coming off there already. Um, you do need to make sure this is very well ventilated because this stuff does give off a strong odor. The solvent on there will, um, yeah, it does give off a strong smell. Also. The gloves, they actually deteriorated because this solvent is pretty strong. I mean, it is stripping the lacquer off there like nobody's business. So in the end, I had to actually change my gloves. So the kit does come with gloves, but I urge you to get some stronger gloves. You can see we put my black leather ones on there because I did feel a little bit of burning on my fingers when I was doing this. So um, you go over it as thoroughly as possible. And when it starts to look dull, you know you've taken the lacquer off, especially when it appears on the paint, on the pad. Now we're putting on the alcohol leather prep. And what this is doing is taking off any solvents that the, um, or grease that the other leather prep hasn't taken off. So stage one is complete. We've stripped the top coat off. So you can see that the paint work is looking very dull on the leather and in fact if we look at the leather cloth the cloth that we use you can see that's the paint that's come off it that's fine so we know that we have stripped down the uh, coating of lacquer and that the car or the seat is all clear right so the next stage now is to start to prepare or to paint all the little grooves so when I say the grooves I'm talking about these lines here where it's difficult to get paint in because of the fact that when you try and paint in there you get a concentration rather than a thin layer which is what you want to do so you can see where some of the leather has worn off you can see it here it's come away so that's fine around the front the cracks have got a little bit smoother now if you've got deep ingrained scratches you can actually use uh, 1200 grit sandpaper to sand it away. In fact, we may just do that just to give it a coat, just to get rid of some of these lines here and to make the seat um, nice and taut. Particularly around the bolster here, where we've got these kind of ridges. So we'll probably give it a little coat, uh, rub down with 1200 paper and see if we can improve that before we go and start using the painted or the paint on there. At this stage, I am sanding the um, seat. You don't really need to do this. I'm only doing this because the fact that we had a lot of bumps on the seat and by sanding it down, I'm gonna make it smoother and uh, that's much easier to for the paint to adhere to. All right, so we've given it a rub down. We actually used 1500 in the end because I didn't have any 1200. And as you can see, it really has now taken um, quite a bit of the paint away, the original black paint. We've got into a lot of the grooves. You can still see some fine grooves where we haven't quite got into, but that's okay because when we put the paint on there, the paint's gonna give it a really good coat. It's gonna make a big difference, but we've managed to work into here, this area here, where of the bolster that has been probably received the most abuse. And we also did the front here as well. So what we need to do now is we're gonna give it a wipe down with some alcohol rub. Um, the alcohol that comes with the kit and then we're ready to start applying the paint inside those grooves. Right, so here's our black colorant. We give it a good shake for a minute or two and then we apply it with our sponge down here onto those cracks. 
Okay, so with the seat now prepped, we're now putting some paint directly onto the areas where the paintbrush might find it a little bit difficult to get into. So by doing so, we get an equal uh, application of the paint product onto the seat. Okay, now we've mixed the paint up. You don't need to um, add any thinness to the paint. It's all already pre-mixed. You just need to spray it onto the seat. And as you can see, it goes on pretty well. Make sure it's all the areas the nice and clean that you're working in. That will make the um, color coating a lot easier. And because it's black, it's easy for me to actually paint this. But if you were painting this a different color, then obviously you'd use a, a thick or thin cover coating. Believe it or not, that is coat number one. We got quite a good heavy coverage. Now we didn't do the headrest because the headrest is in pretty good condition. Um, so we'll let that dry. That will need around 15 to 20 minutes uh, to go tacky. Then we'll come in and we'll give it another coat and see how we get on with that. But yeah, so far it's gone on really well. Um, it looks a bit shiny because it's wet. But when it dries off, you'll see the difference, but certainly that first coat has made a difference already. Okay, so we've done a third coat off camera and that's the finished result. As you can see, it's uh, gone on really well. The seat looks good. Now we need to get rid of that shininess and the way we do that is by adding the satin paint. So I'll show you how we mix that up and then we'll apply it. So now it's time for the finishing coat. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up we want a matte finish, um, so Furniture Clinic recommend that you do 25% gloss and 75% matte to get the kind of finish that you would normally get from a car manufacturer. So that's what we're going to do and what Furniture Clinic do is they provide you with this little cup with um, measurements at the side. So what we'll do, that measurement is 30 milliliters so for our 25 percent of the gloss we're going to want something in a region of 7.5 mil now it doesn't show 7.5 there so what we're going to do is we're just going to measure about five we also need to add one eighth of the crosslinker eco so that's an important ingredient so we're going to add about three mil of that seven of that or five of that rather and we're going to add the rest will be the matte finish and then once we do that we give that a little bit of a mix and then that should be good to go so let's do that now and then we'll apply that coat onto the seat Right, so that's what the seat looks like after about 20 minutes. That's the first coat, gone on really well. It was a bit worrying when you first put it on, it comes up really shiny, it looks a bit worrying, but you can see that it's um, settled well. So we'll carry on and we'll do the second coat. But that does look pretty good, pretty happy with that. Let's get the second coat on. And there she is, the seat completed, all dry after an hour. Now you do need to leave the seat for about 24 hours before you can use it. 
so this will be ready tomorrow but it's chalk and cheese in comparison to how it was so now that we've done this one we've now got the other one to do and that will come out as good but the seat looks brand new it really does look brand new it's such a difference to what it was i didn't think it was going to be that different it really has all right let's do the other one off color off camera and then we'll put that in the car and you'll see them both together maybe not in this video but certainly in the, in the upcoming video okay so that's the seat sorted and i'll get the other one sorted during the week and you'll see them both together but it really does look impressive those kits from furniture clinic are absolutely fantastic and i'm not being sponsored by furniture clinic but if furniture clinic want to sponsor this be my guess but it is a really quality kit uh, and i've used them i think this is the fourth time i've used the the kit and as you can see the results are fantastic good right so what's happening next week well there's something that might be happening next week um but i'm not going to talk about that now but if you're a patron you will find out in due course so we'll see how that pans out but for the tt we're going to be fitting a new head and i know controversial there'll be a lot of the purists now who will be absolutely screaming their heads off because everyone who's anyone who's everyone always says that you must keep the original radio in the TT. That's not going to happen on this vlog. We're taking it out and I'm going to be putting a rather impressive substitute. So we'll be fitting a double din unit into the TT, but the cowling that goes around it is absolutely brilliant. Now I have fitted one of these before and I've come back to it because it's really, really good. So stay tuned if you want to see that. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe down here. Click on the bell notification so you are notified whenever we release a new video. And if you're one of our casual subscribers, don't forget to be a subscriber because if you do, you'll be, in, be able to be enter for this bad boy, which is the NT706 from Foxwall. It's a diagnostic scan system. We're giving this away when we get to 30k. That rhymes. Good. Okay, guys. So we will see you on the next one next week. And I look forward to your comments below. But in the meantime, have a good one.